Welcome back everyone. Today is the penultimate video in my challenge. The next video will be the last one. I can't believe I made it to the end. I really can't. And today started out with this little landscape and you know just kind of a status quo for the last several landscape paintings that I've done in this watercolor challenge. And I found myself feeling a little bit bored with it, and but also taking a, a longer time on the painting than I wanted to. This one took me a little while. I probably spent 45 minutes on this one, and by the time it was done, I just thought, oh, I'm never gonna finish this challenge if I'm spending 45 minutes on each painting. So I just went ahead and finished it up because it wasn't too bad. And then I moved on to something entirely different, which I'm sure some of you will find to be kind of creepy. Some of you will really like it. You know, that's how art goes. <laughs> some people like it, some people don't, but I really enjoyed the next ones. Um, as you'll see, what do I have nine or 10 videos, nine or 10 paintings in this video today. And this is the only one that's a landscape. I think when you're painting for yourself, and this is definitely something I haven't really allowed for myself over the last several years that I've been making videos. But when you're painting for yourself, it's really important to honor your feelings, to, you know, if you get the feeling that you're not enjoying what it is that you're doing, you need to stop doing it. There's no sense in doing something in art if if you don't enjoy it. That's how I feel. Art is meant to be enjoyed on a personal level. So, because I was coming up on the end of this challenge and feeling the crunch, I was getting, I was kind of nerving myself up a little bit and had a hard time going on to next paintings. So I went through my phone and looked at old paintings that I had done in watercolor and came across one that I did a year, year and a half ago or so, and decided to revisit that. So that's where these next paintings came from super abstract figures. Um, they're a little weird, they're a little spooky, they're super abstract, and I love painting them. I love starting with random splotches of paint and water, random brush strokes, and doing what you can to pull something out of that. And figures can be a lot of fun. And you know, you don't have to do them in black and white which gives them a, a little bit more of a creepy vibe but I think you guys know me I'm all about the creepy vibe so 
Most of these are black and white. always with the splatters lately. You can tell when I kind of started splattering because this canvas board that I have under my paper, it's the same one I've been using the entire time and only in the last week or so has it really become <laughs> super splattery along with everything else in the, in the vicinity. All my little crystals that you can see that I have sitting there, uh, they are covered in paint splatters but you know, since it's watercolor, I'm not terribly worried about it. Just wipe them off with a damp paper towel. See, when I started doing this one, I did not intend to make what looks like a girl in a dress walking. I just said, I want a figure. And I just kind of go with whatever shapes happen to come out of it. And they take on a personality of their own. They take on a life of their own. It's more just about responding, not reacting. And I think that the, the definition between reacting and responding is, you know, one that's important. So when I think of reacting is the paint smears in one direction and I didn't want it to go there. I have to quickly try to stop that, correct it, get rid of the paint that I didn't want there. That's reacting. It's the paint does something and now I have to do something. And I find that reacting to watercolor is really stressful. So all of you guys who say, oh, I'm afraid of watercolor or it's hard or I don't like it, I think you probably spend a lot of time reacting to the watercolor. But instead, especially like these figures, it's more an exercise in responding. So what I mean by responding is, I remember the first time I did a figure like this, I hadn't intended to do a figure, I was just putting paint on paper to see what happened. And, you know, a drip came down and the top portion of it kind of looked like a torso, so I responded by saying, yes, that looks like a leg, let's add another one. Or the paint moves off to the left. Instead of reacting and saying, no, I don't want the paint over there, I respond and say, yes, and let's add some splatters, or and let's expand that and make it come out even further. Let's add more color to that little burst. So that's the distinction between reacting and responding. Responding is accepting what the paint has done and allowing it and following it. Reacting is kind of trying to keep control and making the paint do what you want it to do instead. And I think that the more you get into the habit of responding the less stress inducing painting can be and the more you actually learn how to control the paint so the reacting it starts out very you know uh, control less <laughs> you don't have a lot of control you're just kind of going along for the ride but if you keep at it and you keep playing with the paint and learning about its limitations, your abilities, and, and how those things can work together, eventually you learn how to control the paint. And you can, you can then control it and make it do what you want to do, even from a place of responding, if that makes sense.
This one was kind of my favorite. I think she looks like a, in a strange way, <laughs> kind of a, a well-dressed woman in like a, like a party dress or a cocktail gown or something. I almost wanted to like flick some pink or red up around her head so it looked like there were maybe some flowers in her hair or something, but I thought eh, that might take away from my vibe and that would be kind of reacting and not so much responding. But when things like that happen, you can take that as a cue to, you know, oh, do it again and this time experiment with that idea that you had which I didn't do, <laughs> as you can clearly see. They're all just kind of different values and uh, temperatures of gray and black. These I knocked out super fast. You know, like I said, that first one, I worked on it for about 45 minutes. These, I think they were about 15 minutes each. Some of them I let dry and then came back to them, but overall it was about 15, 20 minutes per figure. So I did work through these really quickly and I was able to do all of these figures in, it was just a couple of hours, just in one sitting. Clearly, when you look at these paintings, you can tell that I've been inspired by uh, Stephen Gamble, the artist who did the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark books. That has been artwork that I've loved my entire life, and anytime I can try and channel my inner Stephen Gamble, I absolutely take that opportunity. This one and the next two, I don't know if you can tell there, that's not exactly black or Payne's gray. I used mixtures and I can't even remember what the mixtures were. I just took two colors that I knew would give me pretty close to a chromatic black and mixed them together. I wanna say that this one is, I'm pretty sure it's perylene green and naphthamide maroon. Pretty sure that's what these colors are but the this one and the next two they're all different mixtures and you'll probably be able to tell especially the last one you can tell kind of went nuts with the head on this one it felt a little overly dark to me, but I, I was tired of doing the, the highlight on the face. I wanted it to be a little bit more abstract and obscure, but like I said, I felt like it was a little too, or a little too dark for me up there. So, you know, when in doubt, splatter it out. That's my, that's my new watercolor motto. There we go. Now it's not too dark up there anymore. Here comes another one. Kind of experimenting with water placement. It's always kind of fun if you draw with the water, just water, and then start dribbling your paint in and seeing how it carries it throughout. That's kind of a fun thing to do. That said, I think this was my least favorite one. It just felt really stiff. Like I said, it was at the end of the day I had been painting all day long and spending a couple of hours on just these figures and I kind of started getting a little sloppy and 
maybe ever so slightly bored. So this one is a little, a little strange. It's okay. It's just not my favorite one. And I cannot remember the mixture here. I want to say it's indigo and some kind of red. Oh, oh, I know it's a uh, transparent red oxide. Yeah, indigo and transparent red oxide. That gave a really nice, fairly neutral black. And the last one, this one was a mixture of, I can't even remember, New Gambouge and Carbazole Violet, maybe? Something like that. Anyway, I loved doing these figures and, you know, I hadn't done one for a year or so and so it was really nice to sit down and just do these figures and, you know, repetition kind of helps you build a, a, a process and I definitely feel like I started to develop a process in these and so I think I will probably do some more for myself sometime soon. So thank you everyone for watching and I will see you again very soon for the wrap up to this challenge. And I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful day.